Chapter 2 of Mathematical Physics Book by Robert Geroch Categories What is Category Theory? Category Theory is a general theory of mathematical structures. So we can say that Category Theory is the mathematics of mathematics. So it is a branch of mathematics in which we study certain definitions in broader context. Because each area of mathematics, even though they have different definitions and construction, they show some structural similarities. For example, in vector spaces, we have linear transformation. In group theory, we have homomorphisms. In topological, topological spaces, we have continuous mappings. In manifolds, we have smooth functions and so on. So by taking out the details of each structure, we can put them together in uh, similar settings and that's category. So let's start with the definition of a category. A category consists of three things. The objects, a class of objects, and the second is the morphisms from one object to another object. And the third is composition of morphism. So for example, uh, if phi is a morphism from A to B, and there is another morphism from B to C, let's call it psi is a morphism from B to C, then there is a composition of morphism it takes the element of A to C. So that composition is psi dot phi. So we, we can schematically view this like this. A to B and B to C. So there is a composition of morphism from A to C. And this composition is subject to two conditions. The composition must be associative and there should exist identities. So let's see here if we have A to B and then B to C and then C to D, let's call this phi and psi and lambda. So the morphism from A to D can be composed in two different manner, but they should be equal. So we can compose lambda and psi first and then compose with phi or we can compose psi and phi and then compose with lambda. Identities exist. For any object A, there is an identity morphism which take A into A itself. Such that if phi is a morphism from A to B, then we can compose phi dot IA is phi. And if there is a morphism C to A, let's call that mu, 
then the composition of morphism i a dot mu is mu well it might seem abstract right now so we should take a few examples of what are categories and what are not categories in order to define a category we need to specify what are the objects usually we take mathematical objects but it can be any objects it can be non-mathematical object as well and then we define what are the morphisms from ob uh, an object to another object and then we specify we define the composition of morphisms let's take an example of sets so category of sets in category of sets the objects are the sets ordinary sets and morphisms are mappings between sets and composition of morphism are the composition of mappings and indeed we see here that the associativity is satisfied associativity is satisfied and also there is a identity identity mapping so if all of these are satisfied then it is a category another example let the objects be counting numbers and the morphism is the comparison operator less than or equal now we see that uh, there is a unique composition which is if a is less than or equals to b and then b is less than or equal to c then a is less than or equals to c and we can check that the associativity is satisfied and there is also identity which is uh, any number is less than or itself so these are category however if we change this morphism let's change the equal sign uh, remove the equal sign so we only have the less than sign then we see that the identity rule is broken so we will not have identity so this is not a category so this is an example of not a category not a category let phi be a morphism from a to b and alpha is a morphism from x to a and there is a morphism alpha prime from also from x to a then a monomorphism means so the composition of phi and alpha if it's the same as phi dot alpha prime it follows that alpha is the same as alpha prime phi is called an epimorphism if the composition of beta 
dot file if beta dot phi is the same as beta prime dot phi then beta is equal to beta prime so you may think of a monomorphism as things that can be cancelled on the left and epimorphism the morphism that can be cancelled on the right Theorem 1 In the category of sets a morphism is a monomorphism if and only if it is one to one Recall that a mapping from set A to set B is called one to one if no two distinct elements of A map into the same element of B. So this is an example of a mapping which is not one-to-one -one because two distinct elements of A is mapped to the same element of B. So in a one-to-one -one mapping, any distinct element must be mapped into distinct element. Now, in order to prove this theorem, we must show that one-to-one -one implies monomorphism and monomorphism implies one-to-one. -one. Now, we want to show that a mapping which is one-to-one -one implies that the mapping is a monomorphism. Let phi be a mapping from set A to set B let X be any set and alpha and alpha prime are mapping from set X to set A such that Y dot alpha equals phi dot alpha prime. We must show that if this is one-to-one -one mapping, that it implies alpha equals alpha prime. Now for the purpose of contradiction, let's suppose that alpha is not the same as alpha prime that is there is an element x in the set x such that the alpha is not the same as alpha prime now this will lead to phi dot alpha is not the same as phi dot alpha prime which is a contradiction hence phi dot alpha equals phi dot alpha prime then alpha must be the same as alpha prime so that is a one to one mapping implies a monomorphism next we need to show that if phi is a monomorphism in the category of sets it is a one-to-one -one mapping let phi be a mapping from set A to set B which is a monomorphism and let a and A prime be elements of A such that phi A is the same as phi A prime. Now we need to show that A is the same as A prime. 
let x be a set having only one element x and let alpha be a mapping from x to a and alpha prime is the mapping which sends x to a prime but since phi is a monomorphism we must have alpha same as alpha prime and in particular a is the same as a prime that is this mapping is one to one so that completes the proof for theorem one theorem two in the category of sets a morphism is an epimorphism if and only if it is onto. Recall that a mapping from set A to set B is onto if every element of B is the image under the mapping of some element of A. This is an example of a mapping which is not onto because there is an element in the set B which is not the image of the mapping from set A. These are examples of onto mapping. Now, in order to prove this theorem, we must show that epimorphism mapping implies that it is onto mapping, and onto mapping implies that it is an epimorphism. Let phi be a mapping from set A to set B, which is onto, and let X be a set, and there is a mapping beta and beta prime from set B to set X, such that beta dot phi equals beta prime dot phi. We must show that beta equals beta prime. Now, for the purpose of contradiction, let's suppose beta is not the same as beta prime. That is, there is an element B in, in the set B such that beta is not the same as beta prime. But since phi is an onto mapping, there is an A inside of set A, which maps A into B. Hence, we would have beta dot phi sending A to different element in X. prime and this contradicts beta dot phi equals beta prime dot phi hence if this is an onto mapping it must be an epimorphism we need to show that if phi is an epimorphism then it is a an onto mapping Now, for the sake of contradiction, there were some elements in the set B which is not the image of the mapping from set A. Let's call that element B. And let X be the set having only two elements. Let's call it X and Y. Let beta be the mapping from B to X, 
which sends this element B inside of set B into X and the rest of the elements of B into Y and let beta prime be the mapping from B to X which sends all of the elements of B to Y since phi is an epimorphism we must have beta equals beta prime but in this construction, if phi is not an onto mapping, we have beta is not the same as beta prime. So we have a contradiction, hence phi must be onto. Theorem 3. Let phi be a mapping from A to B and psi be a mapping from B to C. Then psi dot phi is a monomorphism if both phi and psi are monomorphism. Similarly, psi dot phi is an epimorphism if both phi and psi are epimorphism. To prove this, let x be any object and alpha and alpha prime morphisms from object X to object A such that psi dot phi dot alpha is the same as psi dot phi dot alpha prime. Now we must show that alpha equals alpha prime. Now from the condition of associativity, we know that psi dot phi dot alpha is the same as psi dot phi dot alpha prime but since psi itself a monomorphism then we must have phi dot alpha equals phi dot alpha prime but now since phi phi itself is a monomorphism, then alpha is the same as alpha prime. And similarly for the epimorphism. We're going to define subcategory. Let C be a category, a subcategory D of C has the following properties. It's the class of object D, which is subclass of object C, along with monomorphism from A prime to A. A morphism phi from A to B is said to be an isomorphism if there is a morphism phi prime from B to A such that phi prime dot phi equals IA and phi dot phi prime equals identity of B. In the category of sets, an isomorphism is just a one-to-one -one and onto mapping. And here we can define a set to be countable if 
there is an isomorphism between that set and the set of positive integers. Thus, for example, the set of real numbers is not countable. This is a diagram, morphisms between objects. A diagram is said to commute if given any two objects in the diagram and any two morphisms between two objects, between those objects obtained by the composition of morphism, then the two morphisms are equal. So for example here, if we go from A to E, so A, to E, Delta, and Gamma. So, Mu dot Alpha is the same as Gamma dot Delta. Now we're going to define a product of object A and object B that is an object C together with the morphism alpha from C to A and beta from C to B such that if C prime is any object and alpha prime and beta prime any morphism from C prime to A and from C prime to B respectively then there is a unique morphism gamma from C prime to C such that the following diagram commute. If alpha is a morphism from C to A, beta morphism from C to B, alpha prime morphism from C prime to A, beta prime is morphism from C prime to B, then there is a unique morphism, gamma, from C prime to C. Similarly, a direct sum of A and B is an object C together with morphism alpha from A to C and beta from B to C such that if C prime is any object and alpha and alpha prime any morphism from A to C prime and from B to C prime respectively then there is a unique morphism gamma from C to C prime, such that the following diagram commutes. That's the end of the brief survey of category theory. There are a few theorems that I didn't discuss in the book, theorem 4, 5, and 6. And we didn't discuss about functors and natural transformation. Functors will be discussed later in the book in chapter 17 after a few examples of other mathematical objects. Basically, functors are maps between categories and natural transformation are maps between functors. If you have some questions, comments, or suggestions, please do not hesitate to write on the comment section below. That's all for now. I will see you in the discussion of Chapter 3, the category of groups. Thank mm -hmm. you.